start recording. Okay, um, so thank you for joining. Today's a consultation is um, about the GNC capacity building strategy. We already had some discussion with some of you, um, but because we are moving to the next step in the development of the strategy, we thought that this is a good time now to, to consult you on this. Um, I will present what we have done so far in the next uh, 20 up to 30 minutes, hopefully less than 30 minutes, and then we will have a sufficient time for the discussion and we should be able to finish in one hour. Um, if you have any questions, you can type at any time uh, in your chat. Angeline Grant mm -hmm. is my co-host, will be following mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. uh, reading them and then yeah, if you, you are, are not talking you like Andy if you could mute yourself that would be useful hey. Hey, Andy. okay so let's start um, and I'll switch the video to save some traffic so why did we decide to <clears throat> sorry why did we decide to work on the capacity development strategy and why now um, first of all, we do have a very high demand on, um, on the capacity building needs, both in terms of the technical nutrition in emergency, but also on coordination. We have estimated that we have around 20,000 partners and around 600 coordination team members who are constantly in need of the capacity building activities um, in coordination, I am, but also in nutrition and emergency. Additionally, we have new um, capacity development needs due to COVID crisis and number of the guidance that we have developed. Um, and we also acknowledge that rollout of, at local level needs to be significantly scaled up if, want to, if we want to commit to localization. So far, we are focus, we were focusing more on the global level support, sometimes country level support, but it was very difficult to ensure that we um, actually train uh, people, for example, for lo from local NGOs who not necessarily speak language, we do. And obviously, because of the very high staff turnover, we have a lot of um, constant new needs in the capacity building. Uh, we have been doing face-to-face, um, -face mostly um, trainings. First of all, it's very costly. Um, our estimation, together with the tickets and travel for the 20, of 20 participants, it's about 100,000 for one global level training where you only train um, 20 people. Um, now, in terms of the um, current COVID pandemics, it's also unsafe to have face-to-face -face training and we want to look more at the remote approaches. And obviously, it's a very limited reach for such trainings. Now, it all um, leads to the existing and increasing needs that will require a new, renewed focus on nutrition and emergency, cluster coordination, and information management capacity um, development. Um, and obviously, the limitations of the face-to-face -face training online will require new approaches. And that's why we started um, about a year ago working on how we can um, transit to more um, modern approaches where we can reach more people. Um, before I move uh, to that, I just want to emphasize that everything what we are doing is all built on existing tools and approaches. Um, and we are using what already exists as the basis of our capacity development strategy. And we are only planning to cover the gaps without necessarily duplicating what already exists. So what has happened so far um, is we started this, uh, Sorry, we started this discussion on the um, need to develop the capacity building strategy in 2019 in May. And at the last annual meeting in July, we had a consultation of the on the initial draft with the cluster coordinators and IMOs. During this consultation, we agreed on the vision um, that we are working in the right direction and we should continue working on the strategy involving all partners. And then in October 2019, we had a webinar, first webinar uh, consultation with the global partners. During this consultation, we have presented our initial thinking and the agreement was that we, in order to move forward, we need to develop competency frameworks for cluster coordinators, IMOs, and for technical technical competencies, um, so that based on that, we will be able to develop our capacity building strategy. And we also said that we need to review 
what already exists at the global at the also um, at the global level among other cluster partners and also among other clusters. So it took us a few months to do this preparatory job. Um, Radar uh, worked with us to map um, all your partners' uh, capacity building initiatives. Thank you for providing this information and we also shared it with you. Um, so you can also use and know what other partners are doing. We have also done a similar mapping of the all global clusters to see what capacity building initiatives they have. Um, so we will be able to build on that. And we have finalized um, two competency frameworks for the cluster coordinators and for information management officers. I will talk a, a little bit more about that later. So based on this, we have updated our capacity building strategy and we started consultations with all the stakeholders on what we need to do and how. We have already done several consultations and now is the main consultation with all of you to get your feedback on, um, on what we are proposing and how to move forward. So, um, this is um, very quickly the competency framework for cluster coordination that we developed. Um, I hope you all received it when I shared. It's available on the GNC website. Um, in English and French and was developed in partnership with Radar. So very quickly, we have this functional competencies you can see on the left and the C, which is basically based on the six cluster core functions. And this is where we before uh, focused our face-to-face -face component of training. Now we realize that it's not enough and you need way more additional soft skills for people to be able to succeed in these functional competencies. So based on all the discussions which we had, we have developed additional competencies. So core behavioral competencies, this is for all um, UNICEF staff, what is required because most of the coordinators and I am is a, is a UNICEF staff and it's a basically common um, behavioral competencies which are common to all staff but then we also figure out if you look at the b that we also need some additional soft skills and we develop four additional competencies such as demonstrates commitment to coordinated response promotes inclusion demonstrates accountability and so on and we also developed sectoral competencies which is um, about application of humanitarian principles standards and guidelines uh, application of key nutrition in emergency concept and tools and operation uh, safely and securely um, so based on this exercise if all um, 21 competencies here um, if people ha have all these 21 competencies at a certain level then they can succeed at the job as cluster coordinator deputy coordinator co-lead and so on um, and we have um, done similar job for information management officers with the similar competencies, but just behavior which are underlined those competencies are different and functional competencies obviously are also very different. Um, now coming to nutrition and emergency competencies, that's the work which is going to be conducted now. It will be led by UNICEF through the global technical assistance mechanism. And the plan is it will be also executed through UNICEF radar agreement because they have already done quite a lot of work for us. So it would be easier for them to support development of, of this. So how we envision this, and again, it's for the discussion today, is that it would be overseen by the nutrition and emergency competency framework task force. That would consist of UNICEF, one additional representative or two additional representatives of the global technical assistance mechanism coordination team, one representative of the GNC uh, CT, five co-chairs of the GTAM working groups. If you remember, we have five working groups, so we want to have one co-chair represented there and also acting as a link with each of the working groups to ensure that we reflect all necessary technical competencies and three to four um, GNC partners including those um, who develop who supported development the previous competency framework which was developed i think in 2001 but i can be wrong on the date here so the methodology to develop this competency framework will be in line with the other two there will be inception meeting with the task force to outline the process and milestones desk reviews of the previous nutrition and emergency competency framework and all other related capacity building materials, one-on-one -on -one and group discussions with the selected partners or other stakeholders as identified, 
And then while a draft is uh, presented, the steering group or task force will be reviewing um, and finalizing nutrition and emergency competency framework uh, under the GTAM to ensure that we have a competency framework which is applicable to all GNC partners and also all local NGOs and everybody who works in nutrition and emergency. Um, so now um, just very quickly, this is the draft capacity building framework that we developed so far. Again, let me emphasize that it's a very, very initial thinking, which is very flexible and we are open to change it as much as needed. Now, because as a GNC coordination team um, and as GTAM coordination team, we have more, um, uh, let's say, more leverage um, in the coordination NIM. We have developed this part way clearer than the part on the NIE technical competencies with the partners. Um, and that's why we want very good engagement with all of you in order to be able to develop um, this part as best as possible. So don't look at the very small text. I will now present you quickly everything in more detail. So as you see, there are four steps, um, starting from introductory to the master level. In terms of the first level, which is introductory, for the cluster coordinators and IMOs, um, what we're currently doing and we are planning to do that if a new person comes on board, we have online orientation using our um, checklists and other tools. Now, for the partners, what we want to discuss with you and agree upon, so far we have developed a country-specific welcome package. It's a generic welcome package which explains the clusters, coordination, and so on. And also 90 minutes um, orientation for the partners on the cluster approach. Now, the technical component of that is not yet developed, and we, we will be talking today later on how we want to develop this technical component for the partners' work and also for coordinators and IMOs. Now, the second level, which I think currently is the most developed and it's the most important, especially considering that we cannot develop much of face-to-face -face trainings, is on-demand e-learning platforms that we aim to develop. So I'll walk you very quickly how it works, and it works absolutely the same for partners, for local partners, global partners, or for coordination teams. So when a person logins to this platform, um, there will be a list of different competencies, which, we will, which will be based on this competency framework which we developed, or NI framework that we will be developing. Uh, a person can select what is the job title, I don't know, national program manager for nutrition, um, OTP worker, uh, cluster coordinator, and so on. And then based on the title, it will be matched to the correct competency profile for this person. So then he can just answer for each of the competency a set of questions and self-evaluate themselves on three levels where this person thinks they are. Um, there is also a possibility of optional competencies evaluation by a supervisor just to make it more uh, coherent, but it's not necessarily because um, not always that would be possible. So once uh, this is done, there will be produced an automatic report on the recommended learnings, learnings and also given access to all learning materials, not only necessarily those that need it. So how it would look like that, for example, it identified that for this competency, this is the gap, and then it will be matched to the training resources where this person has a gap. Um, once person takes all these training resources, uh, whatever needed for, for his gaps, um, there will be an online test for all the competencies with the multiple choice, which will be graded automatically. And based on this result, or if further learnings identified, then the person will be further redirected back to the platform to do additional trainings. And if not, then we can, um, we can look at the certification process. What we are now proposing, um, and this is what we're proposing for coordinators and IMOs, because for the partners, if they're interested in that, it would require um, strong involvement of these partners, of you. So what we are proposing for NCCs and IMOs, that after they've successfully passed the test, first of all, they can keep access to all resources and then get regular notification when the resources are updated. For example, if we developed a new guidance or if, um, yeah, if there is 
for example, another emergency, God forbid, um, and we develop a new training material so a person automatically informed about this and can further update um, their knowledge. And then for cluster coordinators, we want to have a very light feedback 360 from supervisor, from the partners with whom he works, like SAG, OCHA, uh, his team, subnational cluster coordinators, and similarly, similar feedback for IMOs from, from partners and NCC. So if all this is successful, then the past person will receive a certification um, that uh, they passed this level. And as you see, that's not one training or it's, it would not be a one week training. I can foresee that basically it will be probably a few months of self-paced training until person can master all the materials and reach this desired level. And as I mentioned, it's, we can do it also for NIE competencies, but also the certification process um, in terms of the partners will need to be sought through, sought through a bit more. Now, just also to give you an idea of how it can look like. So when you select that this is your missing competency and behavior, you can be redirected to, to, to the page like this, which lists very, very little um, bytes of information of six, two to 10 minutes, let's say. And then each of them can be, can include, as you see on the right, video, some text, some infographics and so on. Um, why we decided to do it that way is that we don't want this only to be a learning platform, but we also want people at any point just to type query and receive the information which they need for their learning, just specific for something. Now, um, the next level, the next two levels I will be um, discussing very quickly just because we also didn't develop it too much and we think that at first level we need, we need to focus on more basic levels before advancing them. So the level three uh, we are foreseeing that people can uh, participate in the mentoring programs as a mentor, um, we can maybe have some still face-to-face -face simulations in the countries. We can have individual e-learning with the person who specifically um, training them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we can have some additional individual partner programs that we can also agree upon later. And then once the person also completes this level, we foresee that this person is um, trained very well and he or she can share their knowledge with others. Again, we developed it more for cluster coordinators and IMOs as an example, and we have not looked at this at the partners, as partners, but just to give you some, um, um, some uh, sneak peek. Um, so the person uh, can do maybe, can be a mentor now to maybe to, uh, mentees. Um, the person can have a organize with our support a webinar to share their experience in some particular area with other coordination team and partners or prepare case studies recording for the online platform. Um, so for example, if there is some important um, knowledge generated in some country, we can include it in our learning platform at the step two. Um, this person can also lead e-learning activities for some people and provide feedback on this and also documentation and publication of the um, case studies uh, through ENNet or any other means. And then based on this, we would like this person to target for the professional development, for example, pool for the next level jobs. So this is how it looks in, AD, in ideal situation. And again, just because of... Um, as being more prescriptive for the coordination teams and for the global partners, we were able to develop this part much more for the coordinators and IMOs. Now, so what we have done so far, we've presented this to coordination teams in different countries, in French and English um, speaking countries. We had 33 participants from 24 countries and uh, most of the people said that yes, um, we feel that it's a good strategy and it's moving in the right direction. Uh, nobody said no. Some people said don't know just because they wanted to have more information on, on in-depth information about that. We have also asked them whether they would be using the GNC e-learning platform and 93% was very happy and said definitely yes. Um, probably not and don't know. It's basically two people and the reason is that they are 
busy with their master program and they would love to do it, but they just don't want to commit while they not have time. But you can all, all, already see that we can reach way more people with this online platform than with what we are reaching right now, face-to-face -face training, especially now when we don't have face-to-face -face training. Um, so we have also asked them what would be their preferred type of capacity building support, which I'm sharing as a proxy, because I would assume other partners would have similar views and most of the people actually 80 percent think that they want self-paced online learning e-learning uh, but then there will be also as you see all other um, mix of different learning um, opportunities that's why in our strategy while we are focusing on the e-learning self-paced we are also considering all other ways of learning because it's very different from person to person so in terms of the next steps for that um, now from July to November, we are focusing on the development of the nutrition in emergency competency framework, as I described earlier. We also want to establish a global working group on this uh, nutrition and emergency capacity development. I will talk a little bit more about this on the next slide. Um, then in 2020, we want to update all the generic job descriptions for cluster coordinators and IMOs. And I'm happy to say that all other clusters, UNICEF-led clusters have adopted our competencies frameworks for coordinators and IMOs. And they will be also developing the same job descri descriptions that we are. Um, and we want to discuss with you in terms of the competency framework adoption, is there any particular needs that we want as a collective do for the job descriptions that you have? Um, now, fundraising and implementation is for 2020-2021. What I have described, just phase one, um, which is online platform and tracking of the programs, adaptation of the existing training materials for coordination and information management, and development of the new training materials which are missing for the coordination and IAM and soft competencies. Just this one, we estimate um, as about $500,000 because it takes quite a lot for the platform and for development of the online materials. And then the phase two, it's adaptation and development of the training materials for NIE and then design of this learning pass, assessments and certification system, which we want to focus a bit later. First, because competency framework for NIE is not yet developed. And second, just because we really want to speed up putting all the materials online even if there is no uh, yet certification process in place, at least to give this ability to everybody to do their self-learning. Um, so in terms of how we think um, that should be moving forward and what the oversight, and this is based on the GTAM um, coordination team consultation, but now we are opening this for the wider consultation as a proposal. So we think that we should establish a global working group on nutrition and emergency capacity development, that they will oversee overall capacity building strategy and execution. Basically, what I presented as a one slide explaining the strategy, all the modifications and how uh, strategically we think it should look like. We want this working group to consist of two task forces that will be also working on the specific parts. So nutrition and emergency task force, for, which will be developing a competency framework. And then once done, we can convert this task force to the nutrition and emergency, um, it's not FT, it's task force, to develop training materials to accompany this framework. So this will be focusing strictly on everything technical related to nutrition and emergency. And then second task force, uh, which is more on the coordination and information management. As we already have competency frameworks, they will be focusing on the development and guide the development of the training materials and review the content of, um, of this um, proposed training materials that will be developed through our agreements. And in terms of the composition, again, to be discussed and agreed with you, the NIE task force, um, as I mentioned already, we would like it to include UNICEF, um, GTAM representative, GNCCT representative, capacity building project manager, five co-chairs of the GTAM working group, and three, four partners interested in, in this work, global partners. And then for NCCIMO task force, um, 
obviously UNICEF GNC coordination team, capacity building project manager. Um, and then it would be slightly different composition, three to four cluster coordinators, three to four information management specialists, one or two capacity building specialists or our GNC partners. And we also want to have a representation from the OCHA so that other clusters can also learn from, the, from what we are doing because our mapping um, also identifies that their capacity building strategies are very patchy. And obviously we can have all ad hoc experts when we need it. So what we think is that each group will be working separately on their tasks, but then they will be also members of the global working group on NIE capacity development strategy. And they will be also maybe once a month coming together, discussing strategy, discussing synergies and so on. And I'm almost finished with my presentation. Um, what we have now to discuss is the key questions which we wanted to consult you about. So in terms of the way forward and how to do it, maybe can I propose that if you have not yet asked your questions in chat, you can ask your questions now and we will try to reply to as many of them as possible. We also prepared two quick polls to ask your information uh, about your questions. And then if we can go to these key questions to discuss um, feedback on the overall direction, establishing of the working group and task forces, if you have any suggestions on anything, um, anything what we are missing. And Angeline um, Grant, whom I hope most of you know, is with me on the call and she is uh, our co-host today. And she is the capacity building project manager with whom I, whom I explained will be leading this work uh, from the GNCCT site. So, Angeline, did we have any questions in the chat which I need to answer? Um, I had a question from Alessandro which I um, responded to. Um, we haven't had any further questions. Um, Alessandro has put himself forward for the NIE task force. So, thank you so much, Alessandro. It's great to see that you're, um, you're keen and that's really great news. Um, if anybody else has any questions, feel free to um, post them or just, you know, um, unmute yourselves. Okay, I can see we already have some questions. Some additional questions, yeah. Yes, so Andy, does it make sense for the GNC to develop training for IMO and coordination when these are generic cluster issues? Um, so the thing is that they are not that generic. There is some generic component to it, um, which is, I would estimate, maybe 20% of it. Um, there is a currently global initiative to develop IMO training at intercluster level, which would cover that, but there is no initiative to develop anything for the cluster coordination. And this is one of the reasons why we want OCHA to be present at this, um, basically to, to see that we are not missing anything. Now, as I said, we have done mapping of all the training initiatives that exist with all the global partners, sorry, global clusters. So we will be using this as well to, um, to see if there is something already existed that we can use. Now the rest 80% is a very GNC specific um, because it's strictly related to what we are doing as nutrition cluster or nutrition sector, not as other ones. To give you example, for example, our partner reporting tool is very different from what other clusters doing and how they report or how we develop our nutrition part of a you know, analysis is very different of how any other cluster is doing. So it seems that we are best placed to bring all the information which is existing and also develop what gaps exist. Um, now, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out other questions to answer. Oh, sorry, just on this, Andy, I see your question. For IMO, the global level initiative is very, is very global. <laughs> so it just gives an overall overview that this is the humanitarian work and this is what IMO needs to be doing and these are the tasks, but they're not saying how to do it and how specifically each cluster needs to do. So how we see is that we will we will refer to them um, if it's available online um, for some basic 
training and then based on this they will still have to have a very advanced training on nutrition of what we are doing. Um, now Hassan, is this currently based on the cluster coordination capacity only at this point? Um, I hope I understood the question. So that's based on the on our thinking through the coordination and information management development, which we still want to consult with the task force on coordination NIM. As I mentioned, the NIE technical part is less developed. Um, I would say that maybe only level two is very, it's somehow developed just because it's applicable for everything. And that's why we want to have this task force with all of your engagement or representative of the GNC partners who will guide us and GTAM to see how we all can develop it together um, to be it most useful for you. Now, Alessandro, okay, I'm not sure that question Alexandra I have a question about the use of the NIE online training that UNICEF New York is developing and is about to launch not sure why they haven't launched it yet to be honest but it should be out soon is there a plan to link with it for the technical part for everything there is a plan to link to what exists so if something already available then from our platform we will link to that and say do that um, it's only gaps that we will develop in addition. There will be no repetition whatsoever. So once the competency framework for NIE is developed, and for example, we will identify that this and this and this competencies are substantially covered by this training, so you can go and do this training. And then something that is not covered, you go there. Maybe, I don't know, just to give an example, maybe say if the children have a great online um, IYCF training on something, on some part of it. So we will say, go to this website and do this. And only gaps which are not available will be developed. Um, okay, so there are six new messages I can see while I replied. Maybe I should reply it faster. Um, so, Andy, sorry if I didn't follow, but there are four training levels, but three NIE competency framework levels. It's not related. Um, so competency framework levels is more related to your job. Just to give you example, maybe you are a junior um, assessment specialist and then you are assessment manager and then you are assessment supervisor. This has the three levels. But in terms of these four levels of, of development, it's more you develop even if you're a junior assessment specialist, you can develop way more before going to the next level. Um, okay. The question is how we're ensuring we optimize on this seal. Have you looked at aligning this initiative with the PHAP credential system? No, at this point we did not, uh, but this is something that task force or working group can look at. As I mentioned, we are at very initial stage of consultations. Now, um, the NIE online training will be linked. It's currently under discussion. Oh, that's the answer. We have training launch in our platform. Now, last question, is there any competency waiting for the different roles? For example, nutrition and emergency trainer might need stronger learning pedagogical related competencies versus IMO. Um, Yes, absolutely. So the levels in the competency framework will be describing that. So once a person selects which group of profession, of profession you are, you will be linked to the particular competencies and particular levels and behaviors in this competency. So even if you say, um, I don't know, CIMAM competencies, depending on your role, you will have different training materials in this competency to learn, specifically linked to your role. Um, Angeline, have I missed answering any questions so far? No, I don't think so. Um, Alessandra, was it clear for you how um, this all comes together? I think there was just um, a further question on how we optimize the different capacity building initiatives. The idea is that we um, we want to set up this global working group and ensure that everything is very coherent. We certainly don't want to be reinventing the wheel in any way. Um, Sure if that 
he's doing. Yeah, sorry, because typing may not really, it's not my forte in a way. Um, and hopefully speaking is a bit better. Now, um, I, I see it's a great initiative, and uh, but I also see the complexity of it once we start unpacking it. So maybe it's like a colleague, no? I think there are different levels, and each level will require different, um, either diverse type of information or the depth on which each information is discussed is different. So. Uh, I, I understand Anne, uh, Anna was saying we just referred to existing modules or existing materials, but I, I think there is a bit more than that, no, um, to be done. So I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to, um, to, to ing one, we need to make sure we are using those resources, but also the, I believe and I feel that in the process, there will be a need to unpack those resources uh, so that the people are directed to what they really need, because if not, the risk is you may direct them to, to to a lot of information or to a lot of material that may not be as helpful as we thought. Uh, but basically, there is a, a quite an intense process that I think will be part of this initiative that we need to factor in in the timeline. Over. Um, yes, Alessandro, I, I absolutely agree with everything you said, and that was the plan. In terms of the timeline, um, so we do have some funding discussion. Um, let's hope they will materialize soon, but they will not cover all amount. But assuming that we have all the money that we need yesterday, uh, we already have developed all the plans of, of whom we need to hire, with whom we need to partner, how we want to develop everything. So we estimate that in one year, 12 months from now, from having all the funding, <laughs> we will be able to fully finish the development of the online platform and mapping all the existing materials and linking and developing the new materials uh, for the coordination NIM. Now, in terms of NIE, I cannot estimate now how much time it will need because competency framework is not yet finished and will be finished in November. So once this competency framework will be finished, we will know how much um, training materials we need to develop, how much already exists and what needs to be done. And probably we should have another call towards the end of the year or beginning of the next year to discuss that. But yes, all well noted and we, we agree with all of that. Maybe just to add, we also did a very first initial mapping of all the capacity building initiatives of all the global partners, which served as a basis for the development of the um, NCC and IMO um, uh, competency framework. So I think the mapping process starts very large and then will be further refined down as we decide exactly what resources are needed to reflect what type of competencies. Yes, and as a person who read all these reports, I can say that there is not many available online training materials. Um, there are some here and there, but there is nothing comprehensively covering everything that needs to be covered, which, which is expected. Um, okay, so um, maybe then, because I don't see any questions so far, um, I will launch two polls just because we want to get um, some information from you um, how we are doing. So the first poll is, do you think that we are moving in the right direction? And you can answer yes, no, or also I don't know. <clears throat> So I have uh, 11 people who voted and oh, forgot to mention this one is absolutely anonymous. So we will not know who said what. So please feel free to say what you think is correct. Um, so I will close maybe in another 10 seconds. The poll. Okay, we have 20 answers and I'm closing the poll. 90% um, said that yes, we think, you think that we are moving in the right direction, thank you so much. And 10% of people said that they don't know. And um, yeah, 
please feel free uh, to send a message in chat why you think so but my uh, my guess based on the experience with others call um, I would think because we just need to provide more information and more details on that which we will happy to do later um, oh I didn't share the results sorry I'm sharing it now and then I will launch the second poll um, it consists of two questions the first one is if you would like to participate in the NIE, NIE task force and this is um, not anonymous Paul because if you say yes we would like to contact you later and see basically with more details we have developed the terms of reference for, uh, for this working group and task forces which we will send to everybody after the call so you have more details but this is more just to get interest um, so the first question covers NIE task force and the second question covers, I call it capacity <laughs> building task force, but what I meant is cluster coordinators and information managers task force. So the first one technical and the second coordination and I am. Anna? Yes? Could we, I know you said you'll share the TOR later, but it's, it's really difficult to answer the question without knowing. Absolutely. That's the time, particularly the time commitment. I. You know, I, I spend half of my time um, on different platforms and tools and guidance for which I cannot justify to my employer, which makes it really, really hard. And um, I mean, different organizations have different models, but I'm, I'm sure for a lot of people, it's also the case. Um, we, we are working on developing and reviewing a lot of things. And when we do that, <laughs> we cannot allocate um, time for things that are actually more financially attractive for organizations. Uh, and in the times we live in, unfortunately, it, it matters. Um, so it, it's, it's important that you take that also into consideration, um, as well as if, some, if there is a need for a high time commitment from people, think of, um, of, of contracts or, or, or having it retributed if it takes really a lot of time because, uh, because it's, it's really, really difficult. Yes, thank you, Alex, for this note. Um, so as far as I remember, we estimated that for the task force, it would be about three hours per month. Plus, it's probably another two, three hours per month for the capacity building working group. Because if you participate in the task force, you also participate in the capacity building working group. And um, another point is that even if you say yes, it doesn't mean that you subscribe and you cannot quit. It's just for us to have an indication and, and start our discussion with all of you. But yes, absolutely, there will be an official nomination process after you all see the draft TOR. Um, and I see quite a lot of people already voted. Um, I'm happy to close in a few seconds. Um, is there anything in chat, Angeline? Oh, yes. Just, um, time commitments, yes. Mm -hmm. Anna, just uh, on time commitment, can I just uh, substantiate probably the time needed from the task force for the NIE? develop an IE competency framework development between August and November or probably end of December that it's on maybe four or five occasions where we will need them in the inception meeting and then when we will need them to when we need to share the initial competencies uh, draft that has been developed for their review that might take maybe a few a few a few days in the week just to review that in September and then uh, the competency framework to be signed off by the task force sometime in uh, September, the last week of September and the final sign off uh, in November and a bit of uh, feedback uh, in between on the, on the final framework. So as you mentioned, the time commitment for the NIE competency framework development is uh, limited to consultations of uh, the draft, the final draft, 
and know. maybe initial uh, meeting, the initial meeting where we will need to get some uh, inputs from the task force. Yes, thank you, Kirati, for that clarification. And um, and the plan, the potential plan is that one competency framework is developed, and this will be converted to a group that will be working on the training materials. But then there will be a new TOR, a new way to add people or to quit, however the task force decides. Um, and I'm I'm sure if you decide to quit in the middle of the task force working, that also should be okay. <laughs> Hopefully, won't happen. So I'm closing the poll, and I'm sharing with you results. So we have quite a lot of people interested in the NIE task force, less people in the second, which is an IMO NCC task force. So I didn't put it clearly. Um, so yeah, as a way forward, as I mentioned, we will share the TOR with everybody, and then um, we plan to have three to four people in, um, sorry, where is it? Three to four partners in NIE task force and um, one to two partners in NCC IMO task force. Um, I see we have more people volunteering. Um, so if there will be more people, I will discuss with the GTAM coordination team and how GTAM would, would want to go um, if more people are nominated. Um, but, let me end the poll on that. And I see no new questions. Um, maybe just, oh, just to go back to the questions which we asked here, if you have any feedback on that, in addition to what we already discussed, it would be good to, to get it now. Um, and if not, then I would not want to take you longer than necessary. So, can you share PPT and the draft TORs? Absolutely, I will share everything. Yes, yes, Alessandro, we will share. And I agree that it's a major offer that requires a lot of um, commitment, both um, human resources, also finance, commitment um, <clears throat> but I personally think that it's worth it and then instead of this face-to-face -face training here and there we will finally be able to build the capacity of all partners including local partners okay so um, if there is no more feedback, I propose to close the call and give you 10 minutes to rest before your next calls. Thank you very much for the participation. Oh, there is one more question. Who is the radar consultant who will be doing the competency uh, framework development? Um, I don't know, Kirati, can you take this question? Oh. Katie has answered. Emily Faraday, this is a consultant who worked with us um, to develop other competencies frameworks as well. Okay. So, anything else? Well, thank you very much for your participation. I will share with you presentation and recording and task force TOR, and let's hope we will be able to, um, to work better together. Uh, will there be efforts to introduce the competency framework to the country or inter-country initiatives on nutrition governance? As of now, we have already, is it NIE competency framework? Amir, can you please clarify? You're talking about NIE or all three frameworks? Well, I'm talking about a context that there is no active nutrition cluster, but there is a need for strengthening the coordination among intersectors for better nutrition impact. Absolutely. Absolutely, and as a GNC, we now support all 63 countries in the GHRP, and we are also working very closely with UNICEF PD, who has a, who has a huge presence um, in most of the countries. So, absolutely, yes. Thank you very much. Okay, so with this, thank you very much for your participation, and uh, we will be in touch with you for um, 
for more information, for engagement, and giving you regularly updates on, on the situation. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, Anna. Bye for now. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.